context in which these three works were written, I mean, there's a very interesting connection, really, between certainly the Stab at Marta and um, the more, rather more famous big choral and orchestral work he wrote, which was Hymnus Paradisi, in the sense that Hymnus was written as a reaction and to his son Michael's death. Ursula, his daughter, you know, really p persuaded him to write something and, as it were, get it out of his system. And, but yet it was something that he could never quite cope with through the whole of his life. So it is true for this work, which is the, the Stabat Mater, where you, you're looking at a subject matter which is incredibly intense, of Mary seeing uh, her son die at the foot of the cross, and that intensity of, 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 if you like, of that moment when you see that happening, was again coming back to Howells in, in, in another kind of way. So that whilst you know it is about a different subject matter, Nevertheless, the outpouring of the music is so incredibly intense. It's as if he's really just pouring his whole heart out in this music. It's a wonderful work to, to be able to record because it's so rarely heard now. Um, it's so incredibly hard for the chorus uh, and the orchestra, but particularly the chorus. It, I think it shocked, probably shocked certainly the Bach Choir in 1965, uh, as it probably shocked the audience <laughs> to hear it. Uh, by all accounts, it was a very successful performance, but you know this is st still a very searching piece. And now we've found his proper markings that he put into a, a vocal score which allows us now to understand it more clearly it's really given it another context So there is this wonderful relationship between these two great choral works, whereas the Sine Nomine is a standalone piece, really, which we're doing because you know it's very, very beautiful. It's a wonderfully conceived work, uh, very much in the sort of English pastoral style. Um, Howells, though, unfortunately, he. I think he was given a, v a bit of a, a graveyard slot at the Three Choirs Festival at Gloucester when it was first done. It preceded Elijah and it got rather, um, um, you know, the critics frankly weren't very very keen on it. Um, and I think they probably just ignored it because they were all looking forward to Elijah. And somehow, you know, Howells was such a sensitive soul. He probably felt that, you know, this was yet another... Um, problem for him to have to deal with in terms of respect and public respect but nevertheless you know this is a work now I think we could look at and say it's got 
a true uh, sense of his style um, and beautifully um, paced work. Um, he called it something that was very spiritual, actually. He said it was a, a spiritual piece, and for whatever that might mean. Um, but aura, prayer, is one of the words that is used, I suppose, takes us to the idea of that. Um, so th these two works really do have uh, a, a, a fantastic relationship um, in that it's prayer that is at the centre of it. And the Collegium Regale Te Deum is a different thing entirely. It's a hymn, a canticle actually, of praise, um, which he wrote for King's College, Cambridge. Uh, this is a very opulent setting we're hearing it in um, because it's orchestrated and in a very full majestic way and we have not uh, a choir of 30 singing it but 140 so it gives a whole different flavour to it <laughs> 